Beirut was my first stop on a 10-day tour of Lebanon. It's the small country's largest city and is beautifully situated on the Mediterranean coast surrounded by mountains. The city has a beautiful blend of cultures and perfectly merges its legendary past with a modern, vibrant way of life. The city has been through a lot in recent history, but the city's resilience is a testament to how vital this Middle Eastern city is to the region. The city is rising from the ashes, but there are still so many scars of a tumultuous past that are very interesting to see and explore. I had a few days to fall in love with Beirut, and this is how it went. Good morning, guys, and welcome to Beirut, Lebanon. I just got in late last night from New York through London, and this is just my first day here. And I'm gonna head down to the central downtown part of Beirut. So let's go check it out. All right, guys, so I'm super excited to be here in Lebanon. Obviously, if you've seen the news or anything, you know that Lebanon's been going through a lot recently. There's a financial crisis. There was the explosion last year. So there's been a lot of negativity and it's a kind of tough time to be here in Lebanon, but I'm excited to be here and kind of show all the beautiful things. I know there's just such great food. We're right here on the Mediterranean coast. So beautiful weather and really unique merging of different cultures. So anyways, I'm gonna be here showing you all of the cool things to do here in Lebanon, but I'll probably also address some of the other things as well, because I'm interested in seeing where the explosion was along the coast in the port. And the financial crisis right now makes currency exchanges and stuff really weird too, so I might address that a couple times. But so anyways, we're gonna head, like I said, to the center of town and uh, start with seeing some of the older architecture here in the center of Beirut. So all along the scaffolding of these new apartment buildings that are being put up where buildings that were destroyed during the blast, there's all these faces of a lot of the victims from the explosion. It's really touching just to walk by and see all their faces and their names uh, and it says hashtag they matter so so right in the center of downtown Beirut you have this massive mosque here it's one of the biggest mosques in Lebanon it's called Muhammad al Amin mosque and then but you also have a smattering of churches around here and then just over in between the churches and the mosque you have these ancient roman ruins so you can kind of look down on this old roman agora and some of the aqueducts and these kind of arched buildings so it's a pretty cool spot They're right in the center of beirut all right so right next to the big mosque here is saint george's cathedral and I couldn't go in the mosque, it's closed today, but let's go in and check out the church. I obviously won't be able to film a lot of this, but most of this downtown area is completely blocked off. There's like barricades, tons of police officers, and it's where a lot of the government and banking buildings are, so it's really tight restrictions because of the recent protests and mistrust of the government and unrest. But you are allowed to walk through some of these areas, and once again, we're just kind of surrounded by these uh, Roman ruins, and you have these old Roman bathhouses here. And then just up the hill behind a huge barricade is the government's palace, but it's really cool to just see the historic Roman ruins here just amidst these more modern like governmental buildings. 
All right, that was a really strange place. It was like a ghost town that's like right in the heart of Beirut and it looks like it's where everything should be happening. But I've just left the barrier and I've crossed the street and there's this place called Beirut Souks. So there should be a lot of like nice shopping and stuff. So let's go see what that's like. That was super strange. So it's like this really high-end shopping center here and most of the stores are empty and it's like a ghost town. There's like one out of every 10 stores has something going on. But I did talk to one of the shop owners and they said it's mostly because of the explosion here, uh, which was more than two years ago. But they said in the next few months, they plan for a lot of the shops to come back and it'll still be a busy shopping center. of everything that's going on here almost none of the traffic lights work the power goes in and out so I don't know how the traffic works but crossing the street is a little crazy because you never get right of way so next I'm gonna head to Zaytuna Bay which I've heard has been a place that's been redeveloped quite nicely and should be like a nice waterfront nice promenade and some cool restaurants and cafes so let's head there guys so I've just made it to Zatuna Bay and it's this beautiful little harbor here there's these incredible yachts there's so many little cafes and outdoor seating here it's a great place to get a coffee I might get lunch here and then there's this great skyline behind me and so it's just a beautiful place there's a lot of people out the cafes and just relaxing so I think I'm gonna go grab a coffee myself That food was so good. I just can't get enough hummus here. I just want hummus every meal. Then I got these nice potatoes and they had this citrusy lemon coriander sauce on them and then a mint lemonade. So anyways, I'm so excited to eat food here in Lebanon. I've just heard the food is so good and so far it's been amazing. But I'm gonna walk around this boardwalk here to the other side of Zaytun Bay and take a look back at the skyline we have. So here's the view from the other side of Zaytuna Bay. It's a really nice, kind of more modern looking skyline, beautiful boats, nice views. Eating right on the water was beautiful, this nice Mediterranean breeze. But anyways, it looks like there's like a nice corniche that can kind of take you right along the water here, past the American University. And then there's a couple things I want to see on that side of Beirut. So let's walk. Guys, so I've made it to the far eastern point of the peninsula that Beirut city is on. The path kind of goes around the corner and now I'm heading south down towards Pigeon Rocks and there's still this nice corniche along the water. So let's keep heading south. definitely has a, a storied past with the civil war and the current crisis but it's amazing to me here we are with just the most iconic landscape view in Beirut just in this abandoned house on these cliffs it's just the most beautiful landscape and it's just this abandoned smashed glass everywhere building 
wonder how much of this house I can explore or how safe it is. I hope it doesn't just like collapse into the sea. This place was super sketchy, but anyways, I'm gonna keep hiking along the cliff's edge here, but this was a super fun and totally unexpected detour, which is why I love traveling and going to new places and never know what I'm gonna find. So, but let's keep uh, walking along the promenade here. it to the cliffs here overlooking Kitchen Rock but it's really bright right now. We still have about two hours before sunset but you can hike down to the other side kind of on this little peninsula to get around to the other side of Pigeon Rock so I might go check that out now and see how that looks and you'll get kind of the city in the background. view of Pigeon Rock isn't as good as I thought it would be from down here. You don't really get quite the shape and the tunnel of it and everything, but these are just like really cool rocks to just climb around on, hike around. We just have these waves crashing up against them. So anyways, it started, the sun's kind of in and out of clouds, so I might just throw up the drone and get some aerial perspectives. That might be a good shot, and then I'll probably head back up and maybe wait a little bit for the lighting to get better. up to the cliffs overlooking Pigeon Rock here and just waiting for the sun to set. But it's pretty awesome. There's some live music here and just lots of people. It's a very lively place up here watching the start the morning off by walking around the neighborhood I'm in which is Gameza and there's lots of cool bars restaurants cafes probably not a lot will be open in the morning here but at night pretty packed and lively place Just on the edge of town here, you can look down to the port, and that's where the explosion was uh, about two years ago. And you can still see just so much of the rubble over there. And then the sad part is too, here just looking at some of these buildings, you can see the front of them is just completely blown off still. And it was a massive explosion. 300 people died and thousands were injured and hundreds of thousands were homeless after the explosion so really sad i probably can't get too close to the port um, but i'm gonna see if i can fly up the drone and get some aerial shots of the crater where the explosion happened so let's see all 
right, I got a couple of drone shots and then it started pouring on me so I had to bring the drone back and I gotta go find some place dry. Maybe I'll go back into town and get a coffee. and then it's in this like light little like tortilla wrap so let's try it mm. that's good and that whole meal the tea the bread the fowl came to like 375 so super cheap and oh, I just love the Lebanese food anyways it looks like it stopped raining a little bit so I'm just gonna walk around a little bit more and explore Beirut. All right guys, so while I was having lunch there, someone messaged me on Instagram and saw my story about uh, exploring that abandoned hotel yesterday. So she sent me this list of five other places that were abandoned or destroyed during the Civil War. So I think I'm gonna spend the afternoon walking around and seeing if I can explore those buildings here in Peru. I've made it back to downtown Beirut and I'm here at the Egg, which is this abandoned, bombed out, I think it was a theater, um, but it's right in the center of town. And then across from the Egg, there is this bombed out church right here. But the Egg is completely fenced in as far as I can see, so I don't think I can go in there to explore too much. All right, one of the guys here at the church who's working on the construction invited me in, so I guess I can go in and check it out. So that would never happen in the States. The construction workers just invited me in and then the project manager started talking to me, which was actually really helpful. So that church was bombed out in the war and then the egg, it was in construction when the war began in 1975. So it was only half built like this, but it was going to be a cinema and a shopping mall and everything. So they also said, Around the other side, I might be able to get in there and explore a bit. We'll see, it looks kind of sketchy, but maybe it'd be cool to explore it. So let's go check it out. They said there was a door over on this side, and I wonder if this is the door that they meant. It's just, the fence is just pulled back. super sketchy at the same time. It feels like this massive block of concrete is just gonna fall on me any second. Wow, so 
up here, the big dome shape is actually the inside of the theater. And you come up here and this wall is just missing. And you're looking out over the city. This is so crazy. Weirdest, sketchiest, coolest thing I've done. That was such a, it's such a crazy building and the story and just how it was just left like this and it's such a weird shape and there's so much graffiti and everything in there and it's right in the heart of Beirut, like right in the city center. Anyways, I might keep walking around downtown Beirut and see what else I find. Another one of the abandoned places from the Civil War era is the Al Moor Tower, which is here. It's this massive building. It must be 30 or 40 stories high. And so it was known to be the Sniper Tower because it was, it's pretty centrally located, not too far from the government buildings. And so you could get a nice vantage point to most places in the city. What a scary time that would have been. So I'm back down near Zaytuna Bay, right in the heart of these like sleek high-rise condos. There's this massive abandoned hotel. It's the old Holiday Inn and it was built a year before the Civil War started in 1974. And then right when the Civil War started, it ended up being actually quite the bunker for a lot of war. There's a lot of photographs of shootouts within the hotel and it's just completely bombed and scarred and there's bullet holes all throughout it. And it's really crazy because it's right across the street from these really nice buildings. And it's just this complete eyesore. But, and I think it's just a reminder of the war. Yeah, that was pretty insane seeing that Holiday Inn. In fact, I'm back here in Zaytuna Bay and you can see it right behind me there, but it almost does blend in a little bit unless you know what you're looking for. You know, I was coming to Beirut and Lebanon to see and experience like cool things, but it is kind of hard to miss both the current financial and explosion situation and then also the storied past of the civil war here. So ended up seeing a lot of those kind of things while I was here, but it is interesting to see those things. It's good to remember those things. Yeah, but that's about it for Beirut. There's always more that I could see and do in a place, but that's just my experience of how I saw Beirut. Anyways, I'll be traveling around the rest of Lebanon, checking out some of some other small towns and some other Roman ruins um, throughout the country. So, see you later.